up, dudes? I wasn't expecting to be out here working on this unit so soon again after my last video, but I went and turned on my heat because it was getting a little cold and no heat came out, so that's not good. So let's try to see if we can listen to this thing, see what it'll tell us through its uh, factory blink codes and maybe we'll get some heat going uh, in no time. Let's get in there and make this thing do some stuff. Do you know about blink codes? Uh, most air conditioning units have codes that you can look up based on a blinking light on their control board and it will tell you a good guess as to what's broken. So let's take a look at ours. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the breaker for good measure. So right now I got a solid status code. See that little status code? Solid means nothing's wrong, but that's because I have the AC in cooling mode right now. So let's go switch it over to heating and see what happens. Okay, so I just turned the thing on, heat mode. There's my fan, I can feel it blowing air. We've already got a, a blink. So what's the blink? Let's get closer. Now it's like a pause. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. One, two. So that's on this control board here. 32. Pressure switch fault. So just in case, you need to look up yours and see how it does it. But yeah, even if it was 23, pressure switch stuck close, still a pressure switch fault. That gives me a good guess that it didn't see the pressure switch go, so nothing's happening. That's where it got stuck. What's a pressure switch? It is, in this case, a little doodad that uh, has a pneumatic or air tube, as you can see back there. It's this gray tube right here, and that's an air tube, and all that does is snake down in here, and it goes and plugs right into the combustion fan back there. So all that does is whenever this fan turns on, it registers that it's on. So it's a safety to make sure your fan is on, so you, before you pump out any gas, uh, it, you don't die. You know, you don't want gas pumped into your house without this fan running, so that's what the pressure switch does in this situation. And uh, I just went and looked online, pulled the number off of it, got the exact same one. Uh, let's take the old one out and compare it, I guess. The first spade terminal is yellow and it's going on the NO side. The other one is on the common side and it's orange. Man, they did not make this easy to get in here. is cemented on there. You just got this pneumatic tube here. That came off pretty easy. We still have one port. We have a plus, uh, and we have a normally open and a common. So it's gonna be the same, but looks like slightly different orientation. It looks like the screws are gonna be in the same spot at least. All right, so let's put the new one back on. And this one doesn't work with a known good pressure switch. We gotta move on to something else. That went on pretty easy. That went on there pretty easy. Sometimes unseen dangers in here. Looking for a screw and this guy decided to pop up. I do not want to look for that screw anymore. Where'd he go? Okay, that time I heard it click. I don't see a code yet. Fan is on. 
There it goes. I just heard the igniter turn on and the flame or the fire turn on. So you're gonna be able to see some of the flames going. Smell some gas, alright. I think we're heating air. Yep, the discharge here is very hot now, so. Alright. So there you go, you can diagnose and install your own stuff with the help of the internet. Fun fact, uh, I had one of these switches brought readily available at a local HVAC shop, but you have to be a certified HVAC technician to buy from them. And you can get around that by just buying on Amazon. I really think that rule is there so you can't buy buckets of Freon and release them into the atmosphere, but you know, so hopefully this helps you out and you can get your house heated up this winter if your pressure switch is fast.